The planetary characters in Naruto. Somewhere deep down below in the crevices of some rinky dinky fing cave lies a lonely soul still claiming that at most Naruto is continental. And I know that I should ignore this claim most of the time, but f that. This statement pisses me off. How can someone be so oblivious? Naruto has never destroyed a planet before, so how is he planetary? First off, neither is Goku. And second off, destroying a planet is not the only way you could be labeled planetary. In power scaling, there's two ways to scale the strength of a character. The first way is DC, or destructive capacity. Now this is the one most people know, and it's basically what a character can destroy. For example, if someone is able to punch a planet and make it go kaboom, then that character has planetary levels of DC. It's whatever the attack can affect, or how the power scaler said, it's the measured area of effect. Now AP is similar, but not the same. AP stands for attack potency basically it's who you can damage it's the measure of the energy output of an attack for example if a character is able to damage a character that is known to have universal durability then that character has universal ap even if the attack he used to hurt said character did no damage to the planet that they're fighting on now that we know the definitions for ap and dc i have to let y'all in on a couple of golden rules that the power scaling community has first golden rule is the dc of a character is always at least even with the ap of a character so if a character character is seen destroying a planet, not only is his DC planetary, but his AP is also at least planetary. The only thing is, it doesn't go the other way around. The AP of a character doesn't always match his DC. For example, Goku's AP is like multiversal, and his DC is somewhere lower than that. The second golden rule is that in most cases, a character's AP is equal to his durability, because of Newton's third law, which states every action has an equal reaction. So basically, if you dish it, you better be able to take it. Meaning, if I did a Kamehameha that can destroy the house that my ex-girlfriend currently lives in you Laquisha. I would need at least building levels of durability to not have arms like Deku after using it speaking of Deku Deku is an example of a character whose AP is higher than his durability this is shown whenever his arms are completely fucked after a single punch now that you guys understand AP and DC and the golden rules I want to get into how ridiculous people sound when they say that Naruto characters are not planetary Get a load of this guy. Like, at the very least, you can admit that the high tiers in Shippuden are up there, right? Um, actually, they're not planetary because they never blew up a planet. Shut the fuck up. You know what? Before I get into the video, I want to ask for you guys to smash that like button and gently tap that sub button for us. Also, if you're seeing this on TikTok, go ahead and sub to our YouTube channel and watch the full video. And if you're not already in the Discord, y'all go ahead and join that. It helps a lot and we appreciate it greatly. Now back to the video. When it comes to Naruto characters, I think we start seeing planetary levels of AP around the end of the war arc. So I'm going to start off talking about the characters that are planetary but aren't shinobi. Starting off with Kagi is fine ass. Damn! Aside from being a complete baddie, Kage is also a powerhouse. It can easily be calced above planetary with statements and feats. But first, let me give a quick rundown on who Kage is. Kage is an alien from the Otsuki clan who was sent to Earth as a sacrifice for the God Tree. Now, somewhere along her journey, Kage realized that they had her fucked up because instead of sacrificing herself for the God Tree, she decided to murk her partner and later went on to eat the fruit off of the God Tree, giving her the powers to rule the world into complete peace, ending wars all over, and even sharing her chakra with her two sons Hagoromo and Hamura. Things were smooth as they can possibly be up until she got greedy and decided to try to snatch her chakra back from her sons like the damn Indian given motherfucker she is. Long story short her sons wasn't having it and ended up selling her inside of the moon where she sat for centuries all the way from the beginning of chakra to the end of the fourth great ninja war. Now when Kage was first seen in the war she displayed a pretty sick arsenal. First off she creates dimensions. Now there's six known dimensions that she is created all of them being very huge in size with some of them even having stars planets and moons within them so the fact that she can create these dimensions which are clearly bigger than planet size we should know that kage is more than planetary especially considering that creation outscales destruction but let's say you don't agree with that line of thinking you don't agree that creating a dimension with stars planets and moons would make someone at least solar system level what if i told you she was also capable of destroying the biggest dimension that she had with this gigantic 
fucking thing. And in the same breath talks about creating a new time space. And time space is pretty much another word for universe. This data book entry right here even talks about how the move turns the world into nothing. But Kage is not the only character who scales above planetary in Naruto. First off, the Ten Tails itself should be more than planetary. One of the first things they tell us about this damn monstrosity is that it can split the earth, bench press mountains, and that it drinks oceans. Fucking Badlands Chuck style. Hell, when it was brought back during the war by Obito, its chakra alone was literally the size of a small planet. And it was nerfed. Instead of having all nine tailed beasts, it had seven tailed beasts, an eight tails tentacle, and a bit of Kurama's chakra. And its chakra still looked like this. So not only is Kage up there, so is the Ten Tails. The only thing that I hear a lot from the community that I question a little bit is that the Nine Tails is planetary. Since the only reason people get him to planetary is because of this data book statement, where it says the Nine Tails inside of Naruto could easily turn the world to ash. And the Nine Tails inside of Naruto is only half its actual power. So take that how you please. Either way, there's nothing in the anime or manga that directly backs it up in my opinion. So I just kind of stay away from this. But the two shinobi that I know for sure are higher than planetary are obviously Sasuke and Naruto. We know Naruto is literally able to blitz Kaguya, slice her arm off, and damage her numerous times throughout the fight. And he was able to fight against Jubidar, who had the full ten tails absorbed. Not that bootleg BS that Obito had. The full thing. Since he snatches the nine tails out of Naruto, and he takes the eight tails out of B. And if I remember correctly, Data and Toby talk about how a Jinchiriki is stronger than a tailed beast without a Jinchiriki. So Naruto was able to do damage on two characters who are easily over planetary levels in AP. Hell, even before the six paths amp, Naruto might be planetary. Just look at KCM2 Naruto. The reason I say this actually stems from a part in Naruto The Last, where we see the Raikage talking about firing a cannon to destroy the moon. And I know that there was two separate cannons, one to destroy asteroids and another to transport the moon. What I'm saying is the cannon that was used to destroy the asteroids are calc to moon level. Here, pause and read this calc if you don't believe me. And if you want somewhat of an eye test, look how big this motherfucker is. And it's only half. This cannon was charged by the chakra of 100 people. 100 regular shinobi was enough chakra to destroy a moon. In KCM2, we see Naruto give his chakra to thousands of people, even tripling the chakra of Kakashi. The fact that the chakra that Kakashi borrowed from Naruto tripled his chakra levels is insane, especially considering Kakashi is a character with a large amount of chakra compared to most other shinobi. He probably was as high as a 10 times multiplier for some of the weaker characters. Basically, the chakra needed to destroy the moon is pebbles compared to the chakra that KCM2 Naruto has and displayed during the war. Meaning KCM2 Naruto should also be planetary since that's the next step up from moon level. As for Sasuke, I'm sure at least by the end of Shippuden, specifically when he fights Naruto, he was planetary. Since we see him damaging the same Naruto that was able to damage Kaguya, who was well over planetary. Before then, I don't know. I know a lot of people like to say that Sasuke and Naruto are relative throughout the war, but I just don't see it like that. I mean, throughout the war, I don't remember him doing anywhere near the amount of damage that Naruto was doing, unless he was being amped in some way. Like, even during the Kaguya fight, it was clear that Naruto was more effective. I don't even think Sasuke got a hit off, while Naruto did multiple times. And they pretty much even further back up that Sasuke and Naruto weren't relative, but they let him absorb all nine-tailed beasts. And still, he only still mates with Naruto, who got no upgrades after the Kaguya fight. So to me, Sasuke might not have been planetary until his fight with Naruto. Either way, that's already two shinobi that are planetary. And there's more. You got people like Hashirama, who got revived and was able to hold down the Ten Tails by himself, completely restrain him with these gates. And around the same time, Hashirama said some shit that had me completely flabbergasted. The man said that Naruto with KCM2 almost had as much chakra as him. The this dude has more chakra than KCM2 Naruto? The man is ridiculous. And not only that, when he was actually alive, he was able to beat not only Madara, but also a full Ninetales. And Madara was definitely planetary at this point too. Think about this. These gates held down the Tentails, whose chakra looked like this. That same gate was used to hold Madara down. And that same gate was completely destroyed by Madara after he was revived. The man was able to break through it like it was nothing. And to pit the icing on the cake, Hashirama says this. He's regaining his original strength? What do you mean by that? Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me, that sounds like he was actually stronger back when they fought at the Valley of the Inn than he was at this moment, and that's ridiculous. This easily pits EMS Madara at Planetary, and the Madara that was realived in the War Arc at Planetary too. And like I said before, since Jubidar absorbed the full Ten Tails, he had to also at least be Planetary. And if that's true for Madara, then it's also true for Jubito, since he damn near did the same thing. And on top of that, Hashirama outright says that Jubito is strong 
stronger than him. Now, obviously, he could mean two different things here. It's either he's saying that he's stronger than him as an Edo Tensei, which is clearly a nerf version of his original self, or he's saying he's stronger than how he was when he was alive. But still, the man was able to completely manhandle this damn barrier. The same barrier that was able to withstand four Juby bombs. Four of them motherfuckers. And he did this like it was nothing to it. He also has this damn sword of Nunu Boko, or however the fuck you say it, which is said to be used to create the world. Now, we know this is horse shit or clear exaggeration, since we know that the Sage of Six Paths didn't create the world. But still, it must be pretty damn strong. The sword is powered by the user's willpower. And because of this, the sword was nowhere near its full power since Obito was super mentally nerfed at this moment. And still, it took Naruto and Sasuke to beat this. Another thing that's crazy is the amount of people it took to take the Tailed Beast out of Jubito, it literally took the whole alliance to finish this man off, meaning even Jubito could be well above planetary. Look, I'm gonna say it like this. Just put some respect on the verse. I just named five shinobi from Shippuden that are either planetary or above. And I still got two more that I have to bring up. First is Mike Guy. We obviously know that he's relative to Jubidar while in eight gates, since, you know, he f***ed him up. So he gets an invite to the planetary club, and then you got Kakashi. More specifically, DMS Kakashi. The man was able to damage Kaguya, so I Obviously, he also gets into the planetary club. Now, there's seven shinobi from Naruto that are planetary or above, and I haven't even talked about any Boruto characters, and there's some in there that are definitely more than planetary. But for now, I'm gonna leave the Naruto haters alone. Thank y'all for sticking it through to the end of this video. I really appreciate it, and if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and smash that like button. I'd also like y'all to drop down below if y'all'd rather us keep going with the longer videos, or if we should hop back on shorter videos. Basically, put down which way you like more. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Boot out.